All right, we are on to, I think, our last question to cover from Awona Vivian D. Question number four, how can we play with arrays of variables slash objects? Let me, what I'm gonna do in this video is tell you how I work with arrays in vPython. It is certainly not the only way, and I'm not even gonna claim it's the best way, because this is one of the ones that I get comments on a lot on videos is better ways to manage my arrays and my data. Um, but I'm just gonna be honest, that is not my concern. I am a physicist first and a programmer second and nowhere near am I a computer scientist or a data structures person. So I'm gonna show you the quick and dirty way that I work with arrays. Uh, and I like the fact that this comment says variables slash objects because the type of array structure I use, a list, will let you store any kind of objects you want in any kind of associations with each other. Let me show you what I mean. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a list. We're going to call something my list. And the way I like to start out a list is just by creating an empty one. So lists are given by um, an open square bracket. So when you have an equal sign and then an open square bracket like this, Python assumes you're making a list. And if you do this, it's going to create a list called my underscore list. And it's going to be empty. So it's a list with no entries. So if you like, it's a box with nothing in it. Uh, thinking back to my set theory days uh, when I was a math minor in undergrad, this is this is the empty set uh, for those of you set theorists out there. So since we have an empty box here, the next goal is to start placing things inside this empty box. And the way you do that is with the append command. So you use the name of your list, in this case my underscore list, and you say dot append. So to append something means to add it on. So what you're going to do is you're going to specify some object, some thing that you want to work with to be the next item in the list. So for example, if I make this uh, my underscore list dot append one, then the next item in the list is going to be the number one. Let's suppose I next wanted to add the number two. I can do my underscore list dot append and then the number two. And then you think I'm gonna say three, uh, but I'm gonna say five, there we go. So I've got a list of one, two, five. And of course, as we saw in the first video, this doesn't do me much good unless I print this. So what I can do is I can say print my underscore list and it will show me all of the items in this list. And there we go, one, two, five. And you notice it even gives me the square brackets to remind me that this is a list, that Python is treating this as first item, second item, third item in the list. Now, I just made a mistake and I made it intentionally. This is not the first item in the list. This is the zeroth item in the list. That's not a word we use very often in English because most of us count starting at one. Python, inheriting a lot of properties from C and other languages, starts counting at zero. If you can't tell from the tone in my voice, I find this slightly irritating. I've had the rationale behind this explained to me numerous times by computer scientists, but let me just go on the record. I don't believe I'm ever going to be comfortable starting counting at zero. I know there are reasons for it, but I just don't care for it. So for example, if I want to print the first item in my list, I have to say print my list of zero and it will look for the zeroth item. So it should give me a one there. And there we go. So you notice it doesn't give me the square brackets now because I'm not working with the list anymore. I'm working with one item in the list and that item is this number one. So that's the zeroth item. If I want the last item, I go zero, one, two. I know it's weird to be saying zero, one, two while you look at one, two, five. We'll get some more interesting uh, items in the list soon. So when I put in my list of two, it's going to look for the second item, 0, 1, 2, and there is the number 5, just like we uh, input it in here. Now, the nice thing about a list, the reason I prefer lists to arrays uh, or strict arrays is that for a list, you can put in any type of object you want. Here we put in three numbers, but you can also put in text. Here is some text. I'll even put a period. You know what, I'll even capitalize the H, although I guess to be grammatically correct. Although I guess here is is not, is that grammatically correct? I've never been sure. And so what I get from the list here now is one, two, five, here is some text. And of course, it's also printing out the second item, so zero, one, two. So the fact that there's more stuff added after that doesn't change what the second item is in the list. And like I said, you can continue doing this with other objects. You can even do this, drum roll please, with 
graphical objects. So let's append to our list a, we've been doing spheres a lot. Um, let's make a, let's make a box. There we go. So here is some text. So I've got one, two, five, here's some text and then a box. So what it's gonna do is it's going to treat this box just like the box function. It's gonna create a box in a visual display window. We haven't had a visual display window yet in this code because we haven't created any visual objects. But there we go, there is our box at zero, zero, zero with dimensions one, one, one. And here it gives me one, two, five, here's some text and then object. Now, of course, that's because there's not a nice way of saying a white box centered at zero, zero, zero with edges one, one, and one. So it just reports it as object. Um, but if I wanted to refer to that box later, so for example, if I wanted to change the color of that box, I can refer to my underscore list, uh, and then I need an open square bracket. So the two uses of the square bracket is to create a list and then to refer to the item of the list. And that's gonna be item zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, dot color equals color dot red. So let's uh, let's run with that. So it's going to access that uh, that list item number four. It's going to change its color attribute, and so our box is going to change from white to red. Now, of course, the change happens instantaneously because the or near instantaneously because the computer is going through each line of code very quickly. But what that means is you can also access this item's uh, information. Uh, you know, whenever you need it. So like, for example, if I wanted to, if I wanted this thing to tell me what the color was, actually let's not do the color, let's do, let's do the position. If I wanted this thing to tell me what the, what the box's position was, I can have it print my list, uh, item number four dot pause. And it's gonna look for item number four. It's gonna look for the pause attribute. And that should give me a vector with zero, zero, zero. And lo and behold, that's what I get. I get vector zero, zero, zero. Uh, and so you can you can do this, like I said, with any object. So if you've got a hundred boxes on the screen, you don't have to manually call them box one, box two, box three, box four, etc. You can just put them all into a list. In fact, let's do that. Not a, maybe not a hundred, but let's suppose we wanted to make a list of boxes. Let's start it out as an empty list. What I can do is I can make a loop, right? I can say i equals actually let's let's loop over x shall we let's start out at x equals zero and let's say while x is less than 10 if you haven't seen the video on animating with loops uh, uh go ahead and pause this video and go watch that other one because this is about to not make a lot of sense to you i'm sure but we're going to loop over x and we're going to say my underscore list dot append we're going to make a box with a position equal to x comma zero comma zero. So we're gonna be making a row of boxes. Maybe a hundred's too many, let's go with 20. There we go. Um, let's see, and let's give the box a little bit more interesting color. Uh, color equals color dot red, uh, rather than the default white. Close up this, so now that's gonna be added to that list. And of course we need to update x, x plus one. And let's run this. So it's gonna create 21 uh, position, position oh right 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 you have to give it the vector call sign here uh, control 2 and that should give me 21 boxes I think it'll be oh and of course I spaced them out by one so they are right up against each other so let's make that change by two so to give them some space there we go uh, oh yeah, and it's only gonna give me 11 now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, it does give me 10. That's right, oh yeah, I put in a less than sign, not a less than or equal to sign. And so then if I wanted to modify these boxes later, I can just access the uh, the list entry. So I can say my underscore list, um, oh wait, I don't want that to be my underscore list, I want that to be list of boxes. Copy. If you do an append on a list that doesn't exist, it'll, it'll throw an error and say, I don't know what you're talking about here. Um, so let's say list of boxes dot, uh, not dot, let's say, let's go with the third one. And let's change its color to color dot blue. And let's change its position. Let's change its Z position to be negative one. So we're gonna move it back one unit. All right, let's run this one. And I think that'll be a good demonstration of lists. So here, you notice it looked for the zeroth, one, two, third one. 
it changed its color to blue and it moved it back one unit. So now, instead of having to refer to all of these folks by name, I can just refer to them by their number in the list, which is pretty awesome. Um, one other thing I'll show you, I know I said I was gonna be done, but one other thing I'll show you is you can even make a list of lists. So you can have a list like this. And the reason you might wanna do this is to create a matrix. So like if I say list of lists uh, dot append, I can give it a, uh, I can give it a, I can put in a list here. So I can, let's make a matrix row here. Let's go zero, one, five. I can then uh, make another row for my matrix. Let's make that one, three, one, four. And let's make one more. Uh, let's say two, seven, nine. There we go. And now what I can do is when I want to refer to a matrix element, I can print list of lists. I can say, look for the zeroth element and then look for the first element in that list. So this should look in this zeroth element and then look for the first element there. So it should give me, uh, that'll go row, no, excuse me, row column. It'll look in the f zeroth row in the first column. So this should print out a one at the end. Um, oh, I am missing a terminal. Oh, whoops, I'm missing a terminal parentheses. There we go. All right. One more run. Here we go. All right, so there's the boxes, and here it does print out a one. So that's a quick and dirty way to work with lists and even get a matrix out of it if you make a list of lists. Of course, if you need a three-dimensional matrix, otherwise known as a tensor, you can make a list of list of lists. If you need a four-dimensional one, you can make a list of list of list of lists. You can do whatever you want with lists. It's amazing. So uh, I'm going to end on that high note and saying that lists are amazing and wish you a good day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.